All right, number 11. Linda is designing a circular piece of stained glass for the diameter, blah, blah, blah. All right, so look, we pretty much have a circle. There's a circle, and I want to inscribe a square in it. Now, if you're doing this right, you know, you would use a compass. Um, the point is, you're going to inscribe a square into it. So I'm just, you know, just bear with me. Um, that's the diameter. And then that's another diameter. And I do have a video in which I cover um, how to inscribe a square in a circle. If you don't know how to do that, you should totally learn how to do that because that's a skill that that they test that could potentially be tested on this regions all right so uh there's the square inscribed in the circle and uh, what's it say so it says that the diameter was seven inches so then that means this is 3.5 this is 3.5 right because the radius is half the diameter so these are all 3.5 what's the largest possible length of a side of the square all right so now look this is really a pythagorean theorem question because if you want to go ahead and find that hypotenuse here you're going to need the pythagorean theorem all right so it's going to be 3.5 squared plus 3.5 squared equals c squared and then um, you're going to have to take the square root of that to get C. So let's see what that comes out to. So then it's going to be the square root. Yeah, I'm just going to knock it out in one shot. 3.5 squared plus 3.5 squared. Close that. It's approximately 5, right? Or just 4.9. So we'll go with 4.9. All right, and um, that's the largest possible length of the side of the square, um, because if you're going to um, sketch a square inside this, the, the largest possible square you can sketch in there would be a, an inscribed square. All right, number 12. So uh, this is a similar triangles and proportions type of question. Uh, in order for us to find the length of BC, we need to find this length first. So um, these triangles here are actually similar triangles. So we have, um, I'm going to just go ahead and draw them separate. You know I'm a big fan of doing that. Um, this is triangle B, A, O. All right. And we want to orient them the same. Um, so then this is going to be B and then uh, C, P. Okay, so then this is 5 and this is 4. And then BC is X, and then this is 10. So if you want X, you set up your proportion. You're going to say 5 over 4 equals X over 10. You're going to go ahead and uh, cross multiply. You get 4X equals 50 or 50. <clears throat> Divide both sides by 4. It's going to be a decimal, right? 12.5. Is that right? Let's just roll with that. All right, so X is 12.5. So if that's 12.5, 12, 12, and they want, what do they want? Oh, they just want BC. All right, so it's 12.5. Okay, uh, 13. How do we go from triangle A to triangle B? Well, we've been over this already um, earlier. Um, you can't go from this to that by simply a translation and a dilation won't do it either dilation is going to change the size so it's either a line reflection or rotation and it's just easier to say hey look you know all we got to do is just you know rotate this thing right um and 90 degrees um counterclockwise and then we get b so the answer is a rotation so number 14, <clears throat> we have um, two triangles, and uh, we are told that originally we, we had one, and then the other one is the result of a rotation and a dilation. And then it says, which relationship must always be true? 
All right, so look, I wrote these down. When we dilate, the following occurs. The angles remain the same. So choice one and choice two are out of the question because choice one is saying that angle D is twice the measure of angle A. That's just not true because the angles remain the same. Okay? So that's not choice one and it's not choice two for the for that reason. The angles remain the same. So now um we get we're left with choice three and choice four. So if you look at choice three and choice four, they're set up like in proportions. And as long as we just match the angles how they're supposed to match, we'll be able to see which proportions truly hold. So if you look at the question. You're given triangle DEF and triangle ABC. Angle D corresponds to angle A. Angle E, and I'm just looking at the order of the lettering there. Angle E corresponds to angle B. And angle F corresponds to angle C. So knowing this, let's take a look at the proportions we're given. So uh, option three says um, A over C is equal to F over D. That's not true because um, look at the way it's set up, right? It's, it's saying A over C is equal to F over D. That's not true. It's supposed to say A over C is equal, A over C is equal to D over F, right? So this, this order here is messed up. So it's not three. So by default, the answer is four. But let's look at it anyways, right? We got B over E. So we got B over E is equal to C over F. See how that ordering is preserved there? Okay. Uh, okay, number 15. In the diagram below, uh, quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in circle P. So you need to know your inscribed angles for this one. And they want the measure of angle ADC. That's what they want. All right, so let's give it to them. It's going to take a couple of steps to get there however so first let's begin <clears throat> with uh, inscribed angles okay so here we have angle A I'm gonna start with angle A okay that's just how I want to start it angle A is 110 now since we're given angle A I could use that angle to find the measurement of this arc now why would I want to do that well sometimes you just gotta start somewhere and see where it leads you. So that's 110. Angle A is 110. And I'm going to use that angle to get the arc um, DCB. So the arc DCB is going to be twice 110. So that's going to be 220. Okay, so that's the measurement of this arc. Okay, then that means then the measurement of this arc over here, this piece here, is 360 minus 220, and then that's going to be 140. So that's 140. And now if that's 140, this angle here is half of 140 because it's the inscribed angle, so that means this is 70. Got it? All right, so then now... Here is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. So we know that the angles of four-sided figures, they must add up to 360. So let's go ahead and add up 70 plus 72 plus 110. So then I get 252, right? So that 252 is the result of the sum of 70, 72, and 110. All right, now, remember we said they have to all add up to 360, so then just do 360 minus 252, and then our answer is going to be 108.